Good morning. What's up, social media? Hopefully, y'all are having a good day so far. Right now, it's 1016, and we're going to be learning about Gulf Coast Barber College. I'm going to kick this on the FM, and we're going to have some fun. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. My name is Gardy. Right now, it is 1016. If you're taking the time to tune in, go ahead and hit the share button. Feel free to ask some questions. Uh, maybe you are looking to start a new career. Maybe you already are a barber and you have some friends that are, are here in studio. But hit the share button. Let me know what you have going on today. We're going to go ahead and uh, get our, our guests introduced and find out what they have going on. So we'll start over here. Say, what's your name? Uh, Dominique Grayson. Dominique, where are you from? Uh, actually, I'm from Kansas City, but we are actually in the Lake City, Texas City area. So. All right. So, and this is Whitney. She's your wife, right? Mm -hmm. Whitney Grayson. Mm -hmm. Whitney, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How about you? I'm doing good. Um, so, how long have y'all been married, you and your husband? Oh, it'll be 11 years this year. Mm -hmm. And you're from Kansas. Y'all are both from the Kansas area. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we. Were, I was born and raised in Wichita. He was just born there and then decided to move. I guess. Yeah. But um, yeah, we we recently, not so recently, relocated. It's been working on six years since we been here okay cool and then we have another gentleman over here what's your name uh, my name is Roy Jones Roy Jones where are you from Missouri City Texas born and raised all right and so are you uh, are you a, a barber are you in the school what's what's going on I'm also I'm one of the instructors there for Col Gulf Coast Barber College and at the HCC and I'm a 20-year barber uh, esthetician and cosmetologist 20-year barber you've been cutting hair for 20 years since I was 18 you know, so I saw the white in your goatee, but I thought that was like put in there for like a style statement. Nah. Is that that's that's real? No, nah, no, nah, this is all me. This is all me, bro. Man, so you probably taught a lot of people. Yeah. Over over time, huh? Yeah, I taught a lot of people. I sent a lot of people out to board. A lot of people got their license underneath me. I, I got a lot of good students out there that's been uh, real successful out there at the game. So I'm real proud of that. Okay, and and Gulf Coast Barber College. This is a like a newer school, right? Yes, um, we've been in operation for a year and a half now. A year and a half, okay. And then due to everything kind of being shut down, did y'all have to put a halt on things? We did. Um, we kind of took a halt, uh, kind of had to restructure ourselves. So what we ended up doing was moving our classes online. So um, I had correspondence with them. I had to have Zoom meetings for our practical classes. I just didn't want their progress to be stopped with all this happening. But we're back in full action on 6th Street. Okay, so you, wait, y'all are on 6th Street? Yeah, we moved from um, Texas Avenue. I had got the lease like in March and then all this happened. And then during uh, that shutdown, I was moving our stuff into our new location. And yeah, we're, we're on the north side of 6th Street. Okay. I was talking to, I've talked to actually multiple people about that, how during that, that shutdown, it allowed businesses to kind of restructure, upgrade, make moves yeah. that uh, sometimes are forced, yeah. but, but that are, they can be positive, hopefully, you know, nonetheless. So yeah. can you talk about, I get, like, how do you teach somebody to cut hair through Zoom? How do you teach somebody like through video? Is that possible? <laughs> um, it was, it was an experience, um, especially because, you know, technology and computers wasn't the thing um, for us. We're very hands-on. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people chose the barber field to be hands-on. So getting them to switch to that, uh, it, w it was an experience. I had to work with them, but my students were smart. Um, we, we got participation that way. And then we worked uh, also in our book, you know, just with assignments. But okay. We made it all work. Yeah. What, what about you? Was that what do you think about that? I mean, you've been in, in uh, you know, taught a lot of people over 20, 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, how is that making that switch from, like, hands-on to now you got to learn through a, a textbook and, and video? I mean, the textbook has always been there because you got to have the um, the classroom application to be able to go past your um, your written exam uh, for, for the state for your license. But during this whole pandemic thing and whatnot, it, w it was an adjustment, but... You know that like the students were still receptive to it. At the end of the day, they still wanted to learn by any means necessary. So that that's what made it that's what made it an easier transition. Yeah. So, for you, if I understand correctly, aren't you? Did you go? Are you going through the class? Or are you finished with the class? Because I know we had talked. We've been talking for a while, by the yeah, way. Right. Yeah. So I I actually finished my hours, and I'm actually setting to take my practical and my written. So, yes, I'm getting my license through Gulf Coast Barber College. 
So. And good. you ready? You're prepared to pass and everything? I am almost ready. I see Whitney looked over at you like. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, don't make Wait, you look sorry. bad. Yeah. <laughs> I'm there. Yeah. But no, seriously, I mean, e- even me uh, coming into the field, being a new barber, she's done a great job. Yeah. So, uh, actually, Roy as well, definitely uh, giving me some good skills to go forward. And I also see the work every day, so I see what these two people are doing for the community. It's it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, they're blessing for sure. So a year and a half in the mm-hmm. for Gulf Coast Barber College. At what mm-hmm. point did y'all decide, hey, let's start a barber college? Because that's a little bit different. Mm-hmm. I, you know, there's not. I mean, how many are there out there? I, don't, I mean, there's like a couple I can think of in the top of my head, like in the area. There's not that many. Mm-hmm. How do you get that idea? Like, we're gonna start a barber college. We need one. Um, it kind of started like while I was in school. Um, While I was in school, I got the opportunity to um, work with the school that I went to um, to kind of see the ins and outs. Um, I have like a teaching background, so that's what I was doing before I moved down here. I was working at a high school with high school girls coaching cheerleading of all things. Cool. Yeah. But uh, what high school, by the way, it was it's up in Kansas, Piper High School. Okay. I don't know if any of y'all are watching. I, I put it on my thing. but Go, go Piper. Yes, go Piper. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, so working with them and, like, that got me into coaching and teaching. And uh, going to school, I kind of found that some of my fellow classmates kind of was struggling, you know, because a lot of them are doing it for the sake of they're good with their hands and they wanted to get away from the traditional school route. Mm-hmm. But you need the traditional school route at least to pass the written test. So I kind of was seeing them struggle. I was able to help them. Um, I cut on my own in a sweet space, but I kind of was like, this is my calling. Because I think the barber industry has so many things to offer. You can specialize in so many different things, but the thing that I think was my gift and my my whatever to offer to the barber game here in Houston was instruction. So that's the route that I took. Okay. So what is the difference between going and getting like a license in cosmetology and then going to a barber college and getting being a licensed barber? Okay. So cosmetology is more, um, it's more focused on women's hair. So women's cuts and colors and uh, chemical processes like perms and um, relaxers. So on the barber side, we actually encompass all of those things. Like under those things, we're able to do that with our barber's license. But traditionally, we're more focused on men's cutting and shaving of the beard. So the biggest difference is we shave with a straight razor. On the cosmetology, they're not allowed to use a straight razor. So we benefit a lot on our side. And I see a lot of cosmetologists um, are interested in also doing men's hair Mm -hmm. and also doing those shaves so it benefits them to come i guess to our side to get that education to get that licensing so they can do that okay you know uh roy for you do you see a lot of people i mean they they like that that difference like going to a barber getting the straight razor and the Mm -hmm. shave and all that it's a it's almost a lost art to a certain degree and one of the main reasons why, I, like when I had gotten to teaching, because I, I just remember, like you know, when I was a kid going to the barber shop and seeing, you know, guys getting haircuts, getting shaves, and that that shaving is just is just is just something very therapeutic about it, you know. So if you're gonna be a barber, it's like you you got to touch that razor. You know, to me, you're not a real barber if you don't run that razor. Yeah, I was talking to a friend the other day, and he said. He doesn't know what it is about the razor. He's like, he's like, guys, dudes go crazy. They love like you. You bust out like the straight razor, mm-hmm. and then like on the neck and stuff. It's like the experience. Mm-hmm. To me, it almost seems like an old, like you said, like a lost art. It's an old school, an old school thing. Like that, you don't know, like the barber shop, right? Right. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it's like you know, it's it's just something about being able to kick back, get that hot towel, get that lather, get that that real, get that real barbershop experience. You know, where you can almost. Go to sleep. By the time you wake up, you're clean, shaven, you're feeling good, you're ready to go. You know, all yeah. that good stuff like that. Yeah, and it makes your life that much better. I was talking to uh, uh, Nikki Fowler. So she is an uh, instructor at College of the Mainland, the cosmetology department, mm-hmm. and she has a salon in, in Lamarck as well. Mm-hmm. And she was just saying that with all of the shut the shutdowns that happened, she was like, it's, it's like an essential, it should be an essential business. You know, like mm-hmm. it's there's like a, a therapeutic side of it it's like a self-care thing it just helps keep you mentally in the right place mm-hmm. um i guess would y'all agree with that 
Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I think that was the big thing of what's essential and what isn't essential. That that's been a real struggle during all this time, but. It does. It has an effect on the way you see yourself. It has mm -hmm. effect on the way people see you. Um, so being locked down and your hair growing out, you're already, you know, experiencing all these emotions already. But, yeah, a lot of people really care about what they look like. Mm -hmm. um, the second part of it was um, about the whole essential and non-essential is that for us, our jobs are essential to us, you know. Like, that's how we... Um, that's how we maintain our businesses. That's how we feed our families. That's how we do everything. So it's kind of that essential versus non-essential. Yeah. And then school, like school is essential, yeah. right? And that's what y'all are. Y'all are barber college. So that way people can, you know, earn income for their family. That should be, is that it essential? Is. You're right. It is. It is. And it's like that. That's why we kind of uh, switch. We could have shut down all the way and waited for things to reopen. But we um, chose to find alternative routes through Zoom, through, uh, you know, book work different ways because I didn't want to stop their education. I didn't want their goals and their ability to provide for their families accordingly to be postponed. So how many hours, how long does it take to, to I guess, do all the, the classwork so that way you can go take the tests and exams? It's a thousand hours. So it That's a lot. Well, it used to be 1,500. Okay, 1,000 sounds a lot better. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it was 1,500 as of May 1st. Okay. So this is, a, this is a recent change. So what that means is on a scale of um, working 40 hours a week, that's six months. So instead of um, 15 hours, people having to sacrifice nine months to a year out of their life to do this, like they got in the mode of what's six months? Like I can do six months to pretty much change my lifestyle and change the way, you know, I provide for my family. And especially the the investment that you make into it, it's a drop in the bucket compared to, like, if you were going to school for, like, a two-year, four-year degree, eight years for a master's, where in six months' time you got a skill set that'll last you a lifetime and you have no choice but to get better <coughs> and, and be able to maximize your income within a shorter amount of time. Can you, I mean, so in six months... How much can you realistically learn, like in 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 hair in haircutting, right? In in six months, I mean, it, the important thing is to get the first and foremost thing, you know, as far as sanitation, you know, and infection control, all that kind of good stuff like that. Because especially since we've seen now how things have been with the COVID and everything like that, now how important school is now to be able to learn these safe sanitation practices. So that's the first thing. As far as cutting is concerned, as long as you keep cutting, you're always going to get better. So our job is to try to give you the best foundation that you could possibly get to be able to, when you get out there into the real world, after a thousand hours, you know, you just keep developing your craft and just getting better and getting better and getting better. Okay. Yeah, that's that was my, my question, really. I guess, like, what, what are you, the goal is sanitation and then foundation. So if you have that, then it's a lifelong learning process. Exactly. Because it's, it's always going to be uh, continuing education. Because, like I said, like even within 20 years, I've still had to find ways to reinvent myself and even re-educate myself so that way I can give more to my students. Everything from doing a whole another 750 hours just for skin care, another 1,500 hours just for my cosmetology life. So with the state of Texas, I got like 4,500 hours underneath my belt just to be able to give you know, a more rounded education to students. So that way they can get as much as they can need, as much as they can get before they get out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of haircuts were, were going on like 20 years ago as opposed to now? What are people asking for? <laughs> uh, you know what? I mean, you know how to say, you know, the more thing, you know, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So a lot yeah. of stuff just kind of gets reinvented, recycled, like from everything from even all overs to mohawks to all kind of different stuff, cut, color, everything. So it just it just depends on what the new wave is. Yeah, and then I guess like beards too, because if y'all do the straight razors, y'all probably like trim the beards. Because you've seen beards like, you know, there was like big beards, and it was like oh, yeah. oh, tame beards, and then it's just a and, big and thing. That, and that's a huge thing right now with with beards, because like at one point, everybody wanted to be clean shaven, wanted like nice chiseled hairlines. Now everybody wants a, a big Rick Ross beard and everything. Not, but that's a huge market for that also to not just line it up and everything. You know, everything from beard washing, conditioning the face, at you know. Uh, incorporating different skincare, um, 
uh, modalities and everything uh, that, that that's involved with it. So you can have somebody that can just come sit in your chair just for beard work, and you can make good money off of it. Mm-hmm. Wow. So whenever somebody comes to, I guess, to the college, are they looking to specialize in, in something, or do, is that like the wrong mentality, like, hey, I want to specialize in beards, or I want to be able to do this kind of a style, or is it just like, hey, you got to learn everything? Yeah, you have to learn everything, but I think they do kind of come um, – with ideas of what they want to learn and what they what they want to do. But I think the best thing about our school and what makes our school really different is we, we do take advantage of how many different categories of doing hair is under the barber license. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, like, traditionally, like, when I was in school, it was just um, hair cutting and shaving and nothing else. My students are touching color. They're touching... Um, different types of hair texturing. Um, They're embracing the fact that, uh, yeah, a nice fade is great, but these guys are starting to wear more hair on top. They want it perm, like permanent waves, like with the rollers and all that kind of stuff. Um, I've had guys come in and want their hair straightened with a flat iron. Like it's starting to be a thing. And so I just encourage them, you know, whatever you thought, Try everything, and when you leave me, you have a choice of what you want to do, but don't say that I never gave you the chance. Yeah. You know, without going too much into it, I was on uh, on Instagram the other day scrolling, and there was a, a young rapper who, who's who been out of jail not too long, yeah. and he has rainbow hair, uh-huh. but he had, <laughs> like, he had, uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, he had uh, extra hair added on top. Okay. And, you know, there was I was like reading the comments because anytime there's something yeah. that like that, I just like go and read the comments. And I was like, well, if he wants to wear his hair that way, you can. Why not? Like where if he wants to add hair, you know, yeah. people do that. Yeah. You can yeah, do it, do. you know, just add something. It's a style. So it's like it's something extra. Maybe other people will start to do it, too. I, you know, maybe there already are people. And I don't know. That I mean, do that. It's, it's a market for everything. And especially now, I mean, for the most part. People are wearing more color, you know, wearing their hair longer. I mean, for the most part, it's like, hey, give them what they want. But as the barber, you got to educate yourself and to be able to be able to corner that market. Because like I tell students all the time, because this is a this is a multi billion dollar industry. Mm-hmm. And like years ago, it used to be just Kai's and barber, kind of off to their own. But just just the barber side of it now, it's a multi billion dollar industry, and you can touch every bit of that money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that's one of the few things. Like, you know, we're going to teach you how to cut hair, but we're also going to teach you how to be able to market yourself to, to, to you know, so to be able to make more money. And this is the kind of stuff that they're getting out there. So mm-hmm. so that's the kind of stuff, you know, it's like, hey, you want to learn how to do all this stuff. Because, like, at the end of the day, if you want to try to make six figures a year, you got to do more than just ball fades and tapers all day. You can. I've done it. But you're going to be in the shop all day long so being able to expand your expand your repertoire as far as what you can do i mean i'd rather do two heads and maybe make 250 300 bucks off two three people versus in the shop cutting all day 15 20 heads to make the same amount of money but being able to spread the money out doing more 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 uh, more services yeah that makes sense yeah the more the more that you can do like hey they want these things yeah knock out two people and, and then be, and, and then be done, done for the day yeah it'd be good yeah See, that's smart. That is smart. So how much of, mm-hmm. uh, okay, so I have a, a couple friends. They cut hair. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them are new. Some of them have been doing it for years. Um, and I know, like, loyalty, like, to where you get your hair cut is, like, a big thing. So, like, that relationship of, hey, you got to build your clientele so that way they're not going to, like, cheat on their barber or anything. Is that something that y'all go over in, in school or just, oh, like, yeah. let we people know? Do. Oh, yeah. We have so much fun with it. Um, I got to a point, and I was talking to them about bringing it back now that we're back. But I would do contests, like, to have the students um, work on building their clientele. So having them, they're allowed to um, book appointments and have their appointments come in. It could be their dad. It could be their their brother. Like, they might not know how to do a haircut. But I'm encouraging them to talk to people, pass out, make cards, pass out cards, Get them in here. Start to build your um, clientele. So when you leave me, you're not starting from zero. You're starting with something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a, uh, J- do y'all know John, the baptized? He goes, John, the yes, baptized barber. I love John. Hey, John. What's yeah. up, John? <laughs> he was telling me he has like about 20 people from Barber College that he still cuts their hair mm-hmm. that he, he had I'm met. Not surprised. Yeah. And uh, for him, 
you know, he has like a, a market and some other thing. And he markets himself. You know, there's a vibe about it. They're like, I want that guy to come out here, you know, for, for whatever reason. But um, so that's, I don't know, that's cool. I thought that was a really, that's definitely, a really good thing for him. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, if you're able to, like my students, because we have people come in, they're five, well, they're $6 haircuts. They went up just a dollar just so we can um, take care of sanitation, the cost of doing that. But um they they're coming in but if they make a connection with a student that that they want to continue after that student graduates i think that that's a great thing i think that that's great you're supporting somebody at the beginning and then um you're supporting them as they progress in their business as well as on the other side you're meeting somebody and you're supporting them through haircuts and grooming for it could be a lifelong mm -hmm. relationship mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been trying to get my wife to go to barber college for, for years. Okay. This is serious. And she, uh, I was like, you don't even have to finish. So I was like, just go enough to learn the basics, and then you can practice on me. She's like, if I mess up here. So, when, okay, here's the story. Okay. Whenever, we, whenever okay. we first got married, I was like, hey, can you just, like, you know, with the trimmer, can you uh -huh. just do the line? You know, I'm trying to last another day or whatever for a haircut. Right. We had not been married that long, maybe, mm -hmm. like, a couple months. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I'm thinking with the line in the back, right? Mm -hmm. I feel her going up. And I'm like... I was like, whoa. I was like, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you going up? She's like, I'm trying to fade it in. I was like, fade what in? It's a line. <laughs> it's a line. I was like, it's seriously a line. And then after that, I was like, you're not. I was like, no, we're either watching videos on YouTube. And I'm, yeah. I'll send you to Barber College. You can cut my, you know, our son's hair, my yeah. hair. But yeah, she's like, no. I, and I was telling her during uh, everything was shut down, you know, mm -hmm. due to the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And my hair is just getting long and mm -hmm. I look like a fool and feel bad. <laughs> and I was like, if you would have went, you know, six years ago, whenever I tried to send me the first time, think about how you'd be done. Hey, tell her to pull up. We'll, we'll take it. Yeah. Gulf Coast Barber College. So how can people find out information, you know, to sign up and, and how, how it all works? Um, we have a different uh, means to find us. Uh, we have a website, www.gulfcoastbarbercollege.com, um, where we can capture your information, and then we can message you that way. Um, our phone number is 281-989-1244. Uh, Give us a call. Um, and then the last way is just stop by. Come see us, 1501 uh, 6th Street North. I'm still learning the address. That's why I kind of had to think about it. But yeah, 6th Street North. Um, and then just come see me. I know that with this whole, like, coming back from shutdown, mm -hmm. I was kind of afraid of what it would do to, like, business because mm -hmm. I have lost students, not just because of their circumstances have changed. They have kids. One had a baby during this craziness. Mm -hmm. But I was like, wow, so what is this going to happen? I have been blessed beyond blessed. We have had students starting left and right. I average anywhere between two to four students starting a week. I have three spots left. So if you want it, you're, you know, first come, first serve. Got to speak up. Mm -hmm. Got to speak up. Texas City's tricky with uh, the streets and avenues. And mm -hmm. I was fortunate I worked around there for, for a while. And so I got to learn, you know. How, how it all works, but yeah. it can be confusing. Yeah, the, the north and the south and then the avenues. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people know 6th Street. 6th Street is a good yeah. a good marker, and there's a lot of amazing events um, that hopefully we'll be able to come back right. you know, sooner rather than later yeah. when it's safe. But yeah. Is there anything else y'all would like to share? Um, like I said, uh, if this is something that you want to do, barbering has been good to us. It's been good to me, and it's been good to a lot of my friends. You even mentioned John. So it's been it's been very good to us. It's a very um, profitable career path. Um, I think it's also a very forgiving career path. Um, people who not only wanting to make a change in their life because of um, they just want to, but you know maybe people who have a background that isn't the most pleasant. Um, this is this is a new start. You you don't have to flip burgers. You don't have to work at a grocery store. You can come do six months and, you know, change your life. Um, the average barber makes about minimum like $50,000 a year. Like what other thing that, you know, mm -hmm. do you know that you could do that for that amount of time? It, it, that could be fresh out of school almost. Fresh out of school. I have people that, because I went to University of Kansas. Um, I finished up my degree uh, not too long ago, but I have people that we went to school with either making that money or not even making that, like, with a college degree. College degrees are awesome, but this is just an option. 
Yeah, and it is it is something that you can. I mean, why not look at it mm-hmm. if you if you ever thought about it, or you need a new career, or mm-hmm. just it's worth it's worth checking out for sure, right? Yeah. And I know for myself, it's you know, like I said, I've been since I've been since I've been eighteen years old, and looking back at it. You know, even though I had like a brief stint when I went to the military because I had I took a break after like 10 years of doing it. But then like I remember like right after I got out, checked out, uh, checked out a brigade at Fort Bliss. I went right back to the shop like I like I never left. Like I checked out at two o'clock. I was already in the shop like 30 minutes later cutting hair like I never left. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because like cause once you really get a love for it, because it's it's just something about being able to to be able to get paid to be creative mm-hmm. you know and i love that the way I, somebody can sit in my chair and depending on you don't never know what they're going through because you never know who you meet and knowing that they come in your chair looking like yeah but then when they look in the <laughs> mirror they're like some of them some of them forget how good they can actually look mm-hmm. with a good haircut you know some people you know, also because depending on what they go through in the world, where that little bit of 30 minutes to an hour is like the only peace they have during the week because they know they got to go back out go deal with the world again, where at least they know right then and there, nobody's bothering me, I'm good, I can do something to feel good about myself. And and, that, and that's what it's about because, yeah, I mean, you know, you can make a great, you can make a ton of money in this business, but making those relationships and whatnot with people is is awesome. Like, because like, you you never know how long you may have that client. Some clients will stay with you forever just because of just because of that feeling. You know, and it's and it's and it's, it's just a it's just a great thing to get into. It's a ministry. Mm-hmm. It really is. It's a ministry. It really is. Roy, when, when can we expect the the barbershop uh, podcast? <laughs> take off and where can we look for that you know what because I, cause I just opened up a new shop Tell about the a name. couple of the Tonsorio Empire baby oh, okay you know, that's, that's why you see like my Star Wars gear and everything. yeah so, so me and my boy Marcus shout out to my boy Marcus Hightower he's my he's my business partner he's also one of my former students somebody who was who I'm also very proud of mm-hmm. you know he started underneath me you know at Barber College he worked with me in one shop that we were at it got closed down during the pandemic so we was like hey Let's go ahead and just go open up our own thing. So we got a uh, we got a salon suite out in Sugarland, uh, where where uh, where we're located at right now. So we're gonna take that and blow that up, and and so as soon as we finish kind of getting a few things tweaked uh, as far as the the decor, the shop, and everything, then we're gonna buy a couple of mics and GoPros yeah. and, and and try try to get our thing started. <laughs> so so just stay tuned. For I'll be on the lookout. That's awesome. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, thank you all for hanging out today. I appreciate yeah. you guys. So Thanks it's uh, Gulf Coast, BarberCollege.com. What's the number again? Uh, 281-989-1244. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. Real Radio.